Hey, out on Tawakini today, gonna be doing some trolling for stripers. So, uh, I'm gonna get going here in just a second. I'm gonna be doing an umbrella rig, which you see hanging right over there. And then I've got a, um, a big deep diving crankbait with a crocodile spoon on the back on this other one. So we'll get going here in just a second. All right, we're going over a school of fish right now in about 23 feet of water. Um, speed's just perfect, so we'll see if we pick one up here. We did pretty good over here the other night. A load of fish down at 23 feet. Let's see, All right, we we're going over 10 feet, and I sped up, and I thought I got snagged, but it wasn't a snag. I got, got a bite, so I got a fish on. Huh? Feels like a good one too. I feel some big head shakes. 11 feet of water, doing about three and a half miles an hour. Passed over a big school, stopped and spot locked, put a giant shad down and hooked up to a nice fish. Big arcs on the graph. All right, I'm gonna to try to catch some shad. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the big motor on at the moment, I'm just getting up into shallower water looking for schools of bait. And I see some right here about 13 feet. I'll turn off my outboard. I've got the bait tank already set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my live scope transducer out. And I'm going to make sure everything's set right. Here it is. I'm going to drop it in. I'm going to direct it towards the back of the boat where I'm going to be throwing. motor down set my live scope on there's some fish in here too all right switch over to live scope and there's rocks up ahead right there um been where pretty i've been getting them pretty close to there the depth is changing as the water cools down all right, there we go, starting to see some. What I'll do is I'll get in position upwind when I start seeing bait, and then just let the wind push me along because the trolling motor is going to scare the bait if I just keep trolling up into here. I won't get much bait. But I'm looking for bigger schools that are free swimming too, not just the ones that are hugging the bottom. 
They're a good sized school just went by. They're just out of reach though. Just trying to get an idea what depth they're in. Seen a lot. It goes a little bit. All right, there's some more. You can tell those are little little shad, though. It looks more like a cloud than it does individual fish. Then it's probably a little tiny shad. Six feet. And seeing. All right. All that noise on the bottom, it's taking a minute for the active capture recording to catch up. All that stuff on the bottom right there is uh, gizzard shad. You kind of see them right there. Let me go ahead and get the net ready. Just go ahead and let the water. To push me along a little bit. Yeah, that was a good size. That's a good size group right there. That's what I'm looking for. So my transducer's glitching out on me. Only in three feet of water, so they're in shallow. All right. So in my left hand, gather up. The net. We'll put the cone right up at the top, and I'm gonna kind of. It's a seven-foot net. I'm gonna double it over. Oh man, that's a big group of bait. Got a jig caught in my net. All right. And then what we we'll do is I'm gonna pick up from the outside. I'll put it over my thumb, and then you see I've got an outside and an inside. Grab the outside. And we'll pull up about five lengths. And if I come across any tangles or anything, I'm going to undo those tangles. That right there. All right. I'm going to grab about five coals from the outside. There's another tangle right there. Sometimes you'll have to put the net down, pull it over, and then re-grab right. from the outside. One, two, three. Four or five. All right. So now I've got these. I'm going to hold this side out. And then as soon as I see a bait or two, I'm going to throw it like a frisbee. So I'm going to turn my whole body and I'm going to kind of make a circle motion with my arms like I'm throwing a frisbee so that I get a spin on the net. That spin is going to allow it to open up and to fall fall correctly in the water. I just don't want to waste a throw if I'm not seeing any bait. All right. I'm seeing something on the bottom. I'm just going to go throw it. All right, so I'm going to go backwards like this. And I'm going to give it a flip as I pull it out. And then you can see on the... Uh, screen and the net fall into the water so I've got got it in the right place. So I've got nothing, just a dead shed that's already in the in the net. And see right after I throw it, of course the stool, small stool of shad shows up. Alright, so now I'll just repeat the process. That's how I throw it. Some people put the lead line in their mouth, um, lead, line, mouth, no thanks. This method works just fine. I don't have to put anything in my mouth, especially lead. A few, really close to the boat, but not very big. More show up, then I'll throw it. Looks like there's problem with uh, when I've got active captain connected is it really slows my unit down. 
All right, here comes the squad. They stay in range. All right, they're moving kind of fast, but right over the top. Yep, right over the top of them. It looks like I got them. I saw them in the net. Oh, they're tiny. Absolutely tiny. In fact, most of them went right through the net. Takes a lot to use anyway. But you get the point. So there's more of them right there on the bottom. Don't look like they're bigger. This net's heavy. It's a Betts deep water. And it's a pound and a half per foot. And if you take a seven foot net times pi r squared, that's right, math, it'll give you the circumference. Multiply that circumference by one and a half, and I think it comes out to like 31 pounds. So yeah, your arms get tired throwing 31 pounds and pulling it back in and getting it all reset. It's a lot of weight to handle. I'm in like eight feet of water now. Just letting the wind push me along. Looking for some gizzard shad on the bottom because I'd like a few bigger ones. There goes a big fish. Don't want that in the net. This looks like a tree. Don't want that in the net. Is that a tree or is that bait? That's bait. <sighs> Three. Uh, I got some of them. Oh. Yes. Time to show the camera that oh god there's a big squid. I tell you, you gotta get in the water as fast as you can. Uh, this is why I'm not running the trolling motor. If I turn that thing on, that school right there would not be sitting there. They're coming under the boat. You sit in the shade. Where they're sitting right now is directly under the boat. God, I swear I thought that was a tree. Not so much. There's another group of them, but they're kind of far out. I could throw that far if I was closer. Just gonna wait a minute for another group to come by. Looks like we got some coming up right here. Just need to get out a little bit further without spooking and swimming away. Come on. Oh yeah, there's even more behind them. Right there where they are, they're like right under the bow of the boat. I have to wait for them to get out to about 8 to 10 feet. So I'll completely miss them. There's some big fish swimming around down there. I'm gonna try really bad throw. Yeah, barely open. Oh, wrapped around the horn. Yeah, there's a ton right there. 
the net turns inside out on itself. Definitely cause taco throw. Sometimes to rest my arms, I'll just set those weights in that chair. Let my arms hang straight. My right arm gets really tired. Might have to go out a little deeper. Trolling motor. Back out to the wind a little bit deeper. It's blowing me back towards the shore, which is fine. At least there's wind. If there's no wind, it gets a lot harder because then you have to use the trolling motor and you'll scoop the bait. Alright, we've got to about seven feet. Right here. I'm just going to let it drift. Having the live scope is really worth it for bait because otherwise I would just be blind casting unless I see them popping on the surface. But in the middle of the day, they don't do that as much. bait will be moving towards me because the wind is on the opposite side of the boat than it was before. Flip it around though because I'd rather have the net. Go out with the current instead of coming in towards the boat. If you drop a loop, start over. Just when you drop a loop, it's gonna cause a tangle. Arms hang for a second. Usually, this is when a big giant spool of bait will show up. Is when I don't have my net ready to go. Some on the bottom. Check up the gizzard shad. I don't know if this method would work for a net bearer of seven feet, which would be illegal in Texas, freshwater anyway. Other states I know allow bigger. You'd have to use the over the shoulder method with the teeth holding the lead line for a bigger net than a seven foot. Your hand just isn't big enough to hold all that line. Come on. Six. Six foot.
way out there. Even though I missed the spool, I didn't go down to the bottom just in case there's a gizzard shatter if you hang out from the very bottom. Sometimes we get lucky and pull a couple up that you weren't expecting. Seen a few, but looking for a group. A few isn't gonna do it. Through the bank, you should start seeing some. I'll go up in that cove right there too. It gets real shallow, but there's a creek channel in it. Should be some fish in the creek channel. I'm just going to button motor until I start seeing them. a giant spool. We're just moving way too fast. That's what I was looking for right there. Let's see if another one pops up. Chase after that. Let's see if another spool is in the same area. That was a big group. I just saw the I heard the trolling motor. Oop, there's another one. Real fast because you hear the trolling motor. So I'm just going to turn it off. They're only in three and a half feet. They're way easier to get when they're in shallow. The net falls right over them. Not much of a chance to escape. There's some on the bottom. Turn that here in a second. Oh, that was a good throw. I don't know if I got any, but. Good throw. See one. This is shed. Yeah, that's a good shed. Yep. Pretty good size gizzard shed. That's what those schools were. They are. Stepping on a pair of feet. Nice and squishy. Ready? Nice 
big school that goes over. So I can get about a dozen of those. I'm out of here. Go back to where the stripers are. I bet there's a whole bunch up in here where this beach area is. There's some. Yeah, that net went way out that time. Oh yeah, I can see them in the net already. Five or six that time. Good size gizzard shad. Oh, beautiful. This is what we're looking for. Nice shell of water, too. It's awesome. Makes them so much easier to catch. So I'm going to stop. Get a little deeper water. And push me back. We'll be at two feet. At this point, the trolling water is in the mud. Taking out mud behind the boat. Oop, wow. Pocket knife. Grabbed it off of my pants with this clip. No shad. I didn't get my pocket knife back. Deal. Oh my god. So you're talking. bait. There's a gizzard right there. <clears throat> Pretty sure. <sighs> Swimming the opposite way. right on the other side of the boat. That's a good mess up in there right now. All right, just need a few more gizzard shad. I don't get them on this throw, I'm gonna go. I want these shad to be lively. These don't look like gizzards. Just gonna be ready to go. I see him take off. There's a right there. Little gizzards. 